Hello, I'm Ron Clark, coming to you today from my comfy chair, my big overstuffed recliner. So that leaves two chairs on my house that I haven't used yet for these videos. So we'll see. If this proves to be real comfy and, and work, then I'll talk from here for a while. Okay, so today and what may be uh, my most, most controversial uh, video I have done yet, uh, I am going to talk about evocation. And I'm going to talk about the ways that we humans perceive things and how we perceive things affects our experience. Uh, when I was 30, it was 34 years ago now, I had an experience. I was walking out um, in a, a remote location um, on some rolling hills in an old ranch and I came across a stand of trees and it was really inviting so I sat down at the bay sort of underneath the canopy of these trees they came down very low to the ground um, and sitting there for a little while suddenly there appeared a little bit off to, to my left um, a gnome <laughs> a gnome of the earth element, a creature of the earth element. And, you know, I was surprised, of course, and, and happy that suddenly this uh, earth being uh, chose to talk to me. Um, uninvited, you know, just, I was certainly open to it, but I hadn't even thought of it. And my first thought was why, why in the world would an earth element being appear to me as a gnome? Something that came out of fairy tales. A Hollywood gnome. You know, a little guy with a beard and a cap and just so... Hollywood, you know, why in the world would it appear to me in this false human way? And the little fellow answered, you know, in the way that all these beings do without me having to vocalize me just thinking these thoughts, he said to me, it's because of you. This is the only medium that I could communicate with you in. Um, not the only medium that he could communicate with me, but the only medium he knew that I would understand and recognize as a being of the earth element, because that's all I had been brought up with, you know. The earth beings are gnomes, the water beings are, are mermaids, the, the fire salamanders, and the air, you know, little nymphs. You know, and I'd always recognize that these are human images that couldn't in any way <clears throat> apply to the elements themselves. It didn't make sense to me. Uh, but this fellow explained it to me. My perceptions at that point came with all sorts of assumptions, all sorts of personal assumptions and biases and preconceptions, you know, expectations. 
And when I came with those in my uh, perceiving, it affected what I was seeing, how I was seeing things. And in the case of an astramental creature, what I came to the perception with, that astramental creature, in order to penetrate my, my lens of perceiving, had to uh, reply in that vein. You know, they had to take a form that I was expecting, that I was projecting upon this perception uh, in order to communicate with me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have recognized this being as a being of the earth element if it had come in its true form. Uh, so, uh, that shifted me into this period of discovery and analysis of, well, what happens when I perceive something? You know, how much am I determining my perception because of my biases and my assumptions and my preconceptions? You know, if, if the gnome, if this fellow appears as a gnome because that is the filter that I am placing on my perception, what happens when I work to remove those filters? And this is a very crucial part of initiation into Hermetics. We have to come to understand this lens that we put in front of our perceptions. You know, this focusing lens that comes with our assumptions, our biases, our uh, expectations, these very human things. So the world, we perceive the world as if it was all human, you know? And it's not. We judge intelligence and uh, sentience on human terms. And that's an error. You know, the, the transference of awareness will teach you that very quickly. That awareness is not always human in nature. The you know, awareness occurs in an infinite number of forms that are not human. That don't in any way resemble human awareness, human consciousness. And it's the same with the beings of the elements the beings of the zone girdling the earth, the beings of the planetary spheres, these are human constructs. And they're wrong. They're wrong. Well, they're incomplete. We don't see the whole of these planes of existence when we impose these limitations on them because of our human filters of perception. So we take away those filters. The elements, the only time they individualize, they individualize into beings of the elements is when they interact with humans. Otherwise, the elemental realms are homogenous. They don't break down into beings. It's the elements everywhere. The earth element in everything I see around me. You know, the fire element in everything, the water element in everything, the air element in everything. It, they're they are not, the elements are not individualized beings, nor are the beings, you know, the spheres, <laughs> the planetary spheres, are themselves homogenous things. They're not people. <clears throat> They're not spirits 
it is the spirit of the whole of that realm. The Venus realm is a homogenous thing. The solar realm is a homogenous thing. But humans have for so long been treating these realms as a series of beings, a hierarchy of beings. The name spirits in initiation into hermetics and all of the grimoires are human creations. They're created by people seeking to know these realms, but doing so with all of these human constructs in front of them, all of these filters of perception, the filter of bias, the filter of expectation, of preconception, etc. And when we do that, the realm, the whatever realm it is, an elemental realm or a planetary realm or the zone girdling the earth, the realm itself, in its desire to communicate with us in response to our desire, it responds in the only way that our filters of perception will allow us to communicate, and that's through individualized forms. That is a human bias. <clears throat> and not only that, but the spirit in which we come to evocation to working with the, the beings of the elements and the, the sp different spheres is, whew, boy, man, it's really messed up. It's really messed up. We always come to them wanting something from them. You know, that's what Barden's Grimoire is. It's a, a, a um, oh, God. It's like a guidebook of where to find treasure. You know, it's a treasure map, basically. He leads you to this one who will uh, uh, create love, who will create riches, who will initiate you into this magic or that magic. So we always come to these beings wanting something from them. And in the evocation process, we armor ourselves. We create our circle that separates us. We, you know, armor ourselves. <clears throat> and then we weaponize ourselves. You know, we have a wand. We have a sword. <sighs> so we separate ourselves and armor ourselves. We're coming at them. Uh, because we feel less powerful and we need to assert power over them to get them to obey us. And that is what they respond to us with. They must respond in a similar way. Remember, these are astra-mental creatures. The number one law of the mental realm, which will be the ruling realm in this case, is like attracts like. So when we come fully armored and fully weaponized to this exchange with these beings, well, they have to come, they have to come in a like manner. And this is where all the tales in evocation lore about people who have been enslaved by the spirits, you know, tricked by them, enchanted by them. There's all these warnings about, you know, you have to protect yourself against that. Well, the whole reason for that is because we're, we've pissed these spirits off royally because we've come at them with our armor and our weapons demanding 
that they give us these things, expecting that they will give, give, give. You know, we humans are the most takingest people of creatures in the world. Really, we take, we take, we consume everything and look where it has gotten us. Look at the world around you. It's too hot. It's too wet. It's too cold. It's too dry. We're killing the world. We have harmed so deeply the world around us. And all the world wants to do is meet our needs. That's what the world does. You know, before we got to this place as humans where we were taking, 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 and we lived in harmony and gave, the world took care of all of our needs. It was a land, a time of plenty, where our needs were met. Our needs, not our wants always wanting and always taking. So these beings <clears throat> have been pissed off. We have harmed them by evoking them in these ways. By always taking, by coming with our armor and our weapons, and by demanding. There's an alternative to that which I'll talk about. <clears throat> but first I want to explain this dynamic a little more. So these beings, for centuries, and for some for thousands of years, have been evoked in this way. And let me tell you, they understand the human psyche. They understand it very deeply. Because they've seen it all. They've seen some of the smartest human beings, some of the most powerful you know, human beings in their time, <clears throat> over and over again, you know, enter into this game with them, this transactional game. I'll give you a little bit of energy, a little bit of my energy and you're going to give me everything I want, kind of transaction. And they can't not participate. We force them into these roles, into living out and acting out these roles that we have designed for them. But they're not happy about it because we harm them. They have, I think, very little respect left for overall humanity <clears throat> because we keep doing the same thing. <clears throat> Always coming to them, wanting something, demanding great powers, fluff our ego for us, please. So they do that. They are so aware of the nature and the foibles the, of the human psychology, especially as it changes, they keep up to date, you know? <clears throat> they get better and better over time. And they know how to satisfy our egos to keep giving them energy and to eventually owe them <clears throat> You know, we come up with all these ways to not owe them anything. You know, all these protections and, and guards. And we convince ourselves that we succeed. But do we really? <clears throat> I say we don't succeed. That we pay a karmic debt for how we treat them how we treat the rest of the world. As a species, as a 
species of beings, we have a collective karmic debt. And as magicians who evoke, we have an even greater karmic debt. We build a debt when we evoke in this way. So, <clears throat> what's the alternative? That is what I came to discover in my interaction with this being of the earth element. Over time, and working very hard to crack that lens of perception wide open to where I could objectively perceive. Because human perception is a subjective thing on the whole. It's sub we subjectivize our perception. That is what we do. That's our brain is all about subjectivizing perception, personalizing, making it relevant, you know, to the self, relating self to it. But when we break that open and get down to the essential part of ourselves, our essential awareness, we can perceive objectively without those those lenses of perception without bias without preconception without want without need let the thing just be what it truly is i figured out how to do that and then communicated with this being of the element, Earth, and, whoa, the whole element opened to me. The whole element opened to me. And I learned that it was not a fucking gnome, you know? It just, oh, you know, I feel so bad for all the time that I put the elements in these little boxes. You know, these little humanoid boxes, anthropomorphized boxes. Because there's so much more, so much more, when you don't come at them with these preconceptions, uh, especially the preconceptions, and biases and all the human baggage. We've got to be able to just let that go in our perceptions if we want to get to a genuine perception. Now that's why Barden said evocation comes after you've completed step eight, at the earliest. <clears throat> at the earliest. Because at that point in your initiation, you are going to be capable of setting aside these lenses of perception, of knowing yourself well enough that you see what biases you put in your perceptions, what expectations, preconceptions, how you distort your perceptions through subjectification normally. How you can set them aside to get to the, uh, the objective perception. Now, <clears throat> I don't ordinarily evocate, you know. I see no need to evocate. Because the elements are always here on whatever plane I am dealing with, on the physical plane. There's no need to evoke an element, uh, an elemental being, to a physical appearance, or an astral appearance, or a mental... I'm, the elements are always there. 
it's merely a matter of perceiving them and communicating with the element. You know, individualizing it, asking it to individualize itself when that's necessary, at times it's necessary, but it's the exception, really. So, when Arden describes uh, uh, wandering in the elemental realms, now, he describes mental wandering in the, the realms of the elements, and one can also astral wander in the realms of the elements, and that's much more holistic experience. <clears throat> he says, you know, to fill yourself with the element, enter the elemental realm, and stand around, basically, until you meet a being of the elements. Never speak to them at first, Wait for them to speak to you, <clears throat> um, and slowly get to know the, the elemental realm and the elemental beings. Now that's basically a good uh, um, a method. But we are again forcing the element to manifest as individualized beings which is not how the element is in its natural state. That is simply a response to our presence in the realm and our need, essentially. Because, again, the elements, you know, I could almost say that they must try to communicate with us, but it's more it's just in their nature to be that way with anything, anyone who enters their realm to communicate with that being because they are in this state that we are interacting with the elements in a non-combined state, in a, a, a pure state, as it were. Um, that is, you know, what they are about, communication, uh, a transference. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what we can also do, you know, uh, setting aside our human filters, entering into the realm objectively, you know, indeed, having filled ourselves, our mental body, our astral body, or you know, our physio mental body, if we wish. This can be done from a physical perspective. <clears throat> Fill ourselves with the element. Become the element, you know. Dynamically accumulate the element so that it, it completely permeates our being. And at that point, we are in the realm of that element and perceive, just perceive. If you need an individualized interaction, if you don't feel comfortable yet in interacting with the whole of the realm of the element, communicating with the whole of the element, then ask it to individualize for you. And it will. It will do so gradually. But that's just the beginning. It should be seen as just the beginning of your communication process, of your learning to communicate with the element. And it's something you have to discard eventually because it's the whole element that you want to communicate with and come and give yourself. Don't ask for anything. Don't expect and want and need anything from the element, but give to the element. 
give your affection, your love as one being, you know, one awareness to another. Because the elemental realm has its own unique awareness. <clears throat> give love, friendship, just give friendship. Don't give in order to receive anything in return. That's the key. Just give. Because that is what the realm is doing. That is what it does. It just gives itself. When you do that, when you are open to it and objectively perceiving instead of subjectifying it, it just gives. It gives. <clears throat> so, it becomes this exchange, but you have to initiate that by giving. Give yourself. And it applies even more so on the planetary realms and the planetary spheres. Oh, when you enter and just give, the planetary spheres are so welcoming. Oh, they open themselves. And it's no struggle. There's no labor. You know, <clears throat> it's just a series of openings. You climb the planetary spheres by opening to that sphere. That sphere becomes a part of you. Your sense of self, your awareness of self expands till you include that sphere. That's what takes you up to the next sphere. It's if you want to approach the universe in that way. Because the universe doesn't have to be approached in these ways. <clears throat> these are human constructs. They are not the universe. The symbol is not the thing. The symbol is not the thing. When we are confronted with a symbol, which a being of the elements or the spheres is a symbol of the element of the sphere, we have to penetrate deeper than the symbol to get to the essence itself. That's what the magician seeks. It is not the symbol. It's the essence. This is the difference between, basically, uh, as Barton defined it, a sorcerer and a magician. A magician deals with the essence of things. A sorcerer deals with the surface of things and never comes to know the essence in its purity, in its wholeness, in its power. That is where the power is, is in the essence. But we don't do this to gain power, to gain abilities. <clears throat> That's a natural consequence of doing this, of opening ourselves to these realms and increasing ourselves in this way. But that's not the purpose. The purpose purpose is in the journey. That's the purpose of journeying, is in the journey, in what you gain and what you learn, not in the destination. Because your conception of the destination is false. You know, it's never truly what it is when you get there. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> That's where expectations uh, fail us. <clears throat> because we haven't learned what we learn on the journey. <clears throat> and really, there is no end to the journey. The journey is infinite. 
That's what life is all about, this infinite journey. That takes us ever higher, ever more and more and more is included in our realization of self, where it's a constant expansion. And that's what evocation is really intended to be, but can never be truly if we use the standard form of evocation. That at least is my opinion, let's put it that way. I know there are lots of people who will disagree with this. But I prefer to think of it as befriending instead of evoking. Because that's what I do. I go out and I make friends. You know, that's what I hopefully I'm doing here is making friends, companions along the way. You know? <clears throat> I don't approach people wanting something, taking something, needing something. I don't approach the universe in that way. I approach it as a being giving myself, just giving. That's all. That's what, in my opinion, the world needs right now, <laughs> is folks who will give instead of always taking, always wanting something in return. You know, I'll give you this, but I expect this in return. I give you my friendship as long as you're nice to me, as long as you're my friend, you know? That's a transaction. That's not giving. Giving is done without attachments, without needs. In the Jewish tradition, is something I, I, I really learned in my Kabbalah studies and my, my studies of Hebrew language was the, the principle, the philosophy of tikkun, the healing. And this is done freely. The tikkun has to occur just from the heart without any needs or wants in return. You know? That's what heals the world. That's what heals the universe. That's what the universe, that's what all the rest of the universe does. It gives itself. It's always giving itself. We have to give. It's that simple. You know, we give. And the, 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 the universe responds. But only if we don't give, because we know the universe will respond. You know, that's, that's a weird karma-building karma situation. Whenever we have these transactions, that builds karma. <clears throat> That's why we all have such major karma right now. Our karma <laughs> is catching up to us big time, right? In this very minute of our existence, we live in a time that is so thick with negative karma, you know? And we keep building more and more of it all the time because we're always taking, always wanting. And, you know, it doesn't need to be that way. And I encourage anybody who is looking at evocation now, and I know a lot of people have been glomping on to evocation and and Kabbalistic, Spartan's Kabbalistic speech, big time lately, becoming more and more popular. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I urge you if, you, if you're in that position where you're thinking about performing evocation, to think about it for a minute before you do. What 
are you doing? Take a real close look at it. What are you doing? How are you doing? Are you just continuing on with the same old shit that got us where we are today? You know? The wanting, the taking, you know? We've stripped the earth of all that she has to give. You know, how much more do you need to take? <clears throat> how about turning it around and doing something really radical and just giving instead? And see, see what that nets you. You know, it might not net you all the, the bells and whistles that you're going to get if you follow the, the normal standard evocation process <clears throat> but it will get you the real prize the real genuine jewel at the heart and give you an experience that uh, you know few people have in the world even fewer people have in the world the, the experience of a giver instead of the experience of a taker. Now you know what the experience of a taker looks like. You see it all around you. you know. <laughs> Is that what you want? <clears throat> or do you want to be a beautiful human being on the inside, a person who, whose beauty shines forth now that's the real prize, that's the real treasure, uh, that's the, the genuine thing to aim for in life, in my opinion, is that inner jewel, that inner prize, you know, not the external shit. Uh, that's, you know, that comes and goes with every lifetime you live, that comes and goes, you know, that, that, uh, <clears throat> that rat race, you know, of uh, accumulating stuff, and then you lose it all, and then you spend another lifetime accumulating stuff, and you lose it all, and that that nets you nothing. But when you work on on building this inside and and letting it shine forth, that's the real jewel. That's the real goal of all these lifetimes we live is to build that inner that inner glory you know <clears throat> to build that and we do that not by taking but by giving giving that's the key and I urge you to give to the beings in the universe around us whether that be the beings of the element, or the zone, or the planetary spheres, or the beings you meet on the streets, you know? Give yourself. Give your love, give your friendship, give your uh, kindness, your loving kindness. Get you love. Loving kindness. Okay? So, that's my rant for this time. I'll see you next time, maybe from this chair. I really enjoyed this chair. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.